Hello friends, welcome back to the team of All and Unlock. We really appreciate your feedback and uh, also very much appreciate your uh, interest in our videos. Do not forget to continue to support us. And we really look forward to uploading more and more medically knowledgeable subjects. Today, the topic I'm going to discuss is ventricular tachycardia, which I think com comes across all the time. Um, it's a really exciting topic and very interesting, I think. Um, and also, it is a potentially life-threatening arrhythmia that leads to ventricular fibrillation, asocially and sudden death. This can be prevented. You probably have seen this in a movie or a James Bond movie. But we'll try to look from a medical perspective. So what is ventricular tachycardia? It is a tachycardia, obviously, that is heart rate, that is above 100, or a fast heart rhythm, that originates in one of the ventricles of the heart. So let me ask you a trick question here. What do you think is probably the more dangerous ventricular tachycardia? The one originating from the right or the left? Now, obviously, I cannot interact, interact with you. I'm sure you might be thinking of left ventricle because that's all we, we kind of concentrate more on and clinically more important. But interestingly, ventricular tachycardias originating from the right ventricle are probably more dangerous. I thought I'll put you there, that information, which, which is interesting to know. So don't think ventricular tachycardia from the right side are okay. Any ventricular tachycardia is bad, can lead to death suddenly. So how do you recognize this entity? So this is how it looks like. You either take a rhythm strip or a telemonitor when a patient is admitted to the hospital. You have these runs of QRS complexes which are broad, pretty much regular, sometimes very rarely can be irregular, and they are of the same amplitude or what you can access. And this is how usually it looks like. Your alarm on the telemonitor will go off or um, the ECG lead starts machine starts beeping so this is how you should recognize it this is how it looks like I think picture is worth thousand words that's why I put in there now let's look at how do you manage and what are the types of ventricular tachycardia so for all practical purposes you need to know two classifications for ventricular tachycardia one whether it is sustained or non-sustained the reason for that is important is the way you approach in terms of management differs. Sustained tachycardia is ventricular tachycardia is something that is more than 30 seconds lasting, whereas non-sustained is less than 30 seconds. So obviously anything which is sustained is more dangerous. So your approach is a bit different. This is more useful practically, but for more for exam purposes or theoretically or also practical purposes. The, the thing that you need to remember is the morphology of the ventricular tachycardia. Monomorphic versus polymorphic. What does that really mean? Monomorphic ventricular tachycardia means it has the same axis. So if you just look at it from distance, look at this EKG or ECG with monomorphic VT, where the QRS amplitude is exactly similar, doesn't change, follows a fairly regular pattern. So it has a similar morphology. But the polymorphic VT is this one here, where you can see it is broad, QRS, erratic type of tachycardia. But what is different from this and that EKG is the amplitude keeps on increasing or decreasing. And that's what the difference is. Polymorphic is obviously very bad, more dangerous than monomorphic, although I would say both are devils. And monomorphic is probably less evil, if you want to call it as. So, these are the types. How do you treat? 
I think as soon as you hear ventricular tachycardia, you imagine a situation of cardioversion or shocking in layman terms because that's that's the treatment. Now you can divide how you want to approach this by assessing patient status. If they're hemodynamically unstable, that is, there's no pulse, they're unresponsive, cardioversion, there's no question about it. Okay? But if they are awake and they have a pulse, they have a blood pressure, then you can choose between medications versus cardioversion still. So remember, cardioversion is probably the most important tool in the management of ventricular tachycardia. Um, you use a synchronized shock. We can go into ACLS protocol later on in the coming topics. That is one of the things that we're going to we're working on right now. So as far as medications that are available to treat, I think remember amiodarone, probably the most commonly used, the best medication for management of ventricular tachycardia. Once upon a time, lidocaine was used, not anymore, the drug of choice. Procanamide and amoxicillin can be used, but very rarely used by expert cardiologists. As far as other modalities are concerned, ablation that is used not on an urgent basis, but more semi-urgent basis, because basic pathophysiology of tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia is there are certain areas in the ventricle that trigger these electrical activities which are chaotic and damaging. And the idea of ablation is going there with a laser and just burning those areas so that you just zap them as they call. This is successful sometimes but not all the time. Pacemaker mediated treatment of ventricular tachycardia is something I'm sure you may not have heard that but it is um, used especially somebody who's already got a pacemaker implanted where you can pace the patient's heart faster than the ventricular rate, then it does slow down and get corrected. If you don't remember, okay. I think most important to, thing to remember is cardioversion, which is synchronized, and medications like amiodro. One interesting medication that you should remember is magnesium, which is specifically used in polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. That is torsas de pontis. Um, I think uh, that's that's the summary of uh, in nutshell about ventricular tachycardia. I have not addressed quite a few things here. Obviously, I don't want to go in detail and bore you. That's why I did not um, talk much. Uh, one thing I would like to um, make you aware of is what is the most common cause of ventricular tachycardia? And that is ischemia, ischemia, ischemia. Never forget this. Whenever you think of VT, think of ischemia or myocardial infarction. There are other causes of VT. I'm not going to go into detail and confuse you further. Let us know your feedbacks. Very happy to change it, improve. Hope this helps. Have a good day.